The neighbor's 2002 Chevy S10 needed front brakes, and I agreed to do it as long as I could film it and drink beer. He supplied the beer. So, bust the front wheel off. If you turn it away from you, get at the caliper a little better. And there's two slider bolts come out of the back, and they're uh, 3 8 Allen head. So, I'm using a 3 8 Allen socket on an air ratchet. Bust them loose, pull them out, and you can tap the cal caliper off. Just tap on it with a hammer if you have to. Nice easy taps. So that comes off. Then I'm going to put a bolt back in it just to hold it in place so it doesn't hang from the uh, brake line. You can hang it from up above if you can get to something with a bungee or a piece of wire. I'm just putting the bolt back in. It'll hang there from that bolt. Then we can take the uh, rotors off. We're putting rotors on. Rotors are like 30 bucks a piece for this truck, so most of the time I'll just replace them. Got to take the dust cap off. Just kind of pry it out of there with a hammer and a chisel. No big wax, just work it off there from side to side. Then I'm going to straighten the cotter key out. There's a cotter key going through a castle nut that holds that nut on. Once it's straight, I can pull it out the other side. Take that nut off. It's 11 sixteenths, I believe. It's a castle nut. Then the brake rotor will pull right off, and as you pull it off, the outer bearing and thrust washer will fall out. Keep those. We're going to reuse them. Then the rotor will pull all the way off, and you'll see there's a bearing in the back of it. You'll have to pull the seal out and save that bearing as well. Go ahead and take the brake pads out. They're spent. Down to the squealers anyway. At least he didn't run it till it was on the rivets. Then we're going to have to push the piston back in the caliper. And we're doing that with a C-clamp. Push it all the way back in the caliper because the new pads are going to be thicker and they won't fit over the new rotor unless you push the piston all the way back. Then I'm going to pull the slider bolt or slider pin sleeves out, they're little metal sleeves and then inside of there there's a rubber o-ring that the slider pin sleeve rides on. I'll pick that o-ring out, there's the o-ring because you should always buy the hardware pack. Buy the hardware pack when you get the brakes. It's like six or seven dollars and you get all new little hardware. I'm going to put the new o-ring in there's a little groove inside the caliper there where it goes. I'm going to lube it up with some brake grease, or brake lube they call it. And I'm going to put the new sleeve that comes in the hardware pack back in the caliper. It rides on that O-ring and it should slide a little bit in and out. They fit in tight so I'm using channel locks just to kind of force it in. And in the hardware pack also comes a little o-ring that goes on the end of the bolt. And I've cleaned these bolts up with the wire wheel. There's a little groove at the top of the threads, between the threads and the head of the bolt. And I'm going to lube that up with brake lube as well. Just lube up the threads and the o-ring. They'll be ready to go. Both bolts. I'm going to go ahead and lube up the pads too. On the back of the pads, if you put a little brake lube there, it'll keep it from uh, whistling when you're using the brakes. And you just got to kind of match it up. I'm matching it up with the old pad to see where they rubbed before and make sure I get those spots lubed. Don't overdo it with a brake lube. You don't want to get out on the brake pads. I'll go ahead and install those into the caliper. The back one fits into the piston. There's a metal clip. Here's the outer pad. Again, I'm matching it up with the old one. Make sure I get lube where it used to rub against the caliper. Install that in the caliper. It's ready to go. Then over on the bench, I've cleaned the bearings, the castle nut, and the cotter key, and the dust cap. Now I'm going to repack the bearing. I've cleaned them and dried them. 
I'm going to repack the bearing with grease. I put it in uh, one of these bearing packing tools. These are like seven dollars. Get one of these two. You hook that up to your grease gun. You pump some grease in until it oozes out of the bearing. So now you're getting it all inside that bearing cage, all around every needle bearing. Take it out of the packer and just rub a little of that excess grease on the outside, and that bearing's ready to go back in. I'm going to repeat it for the outer bearing. So it just sandwiches between this bearing packing tool and then just pump the grease until it oozes out. Rub a little of the excess grease on the outside and it's ready to go. We've got to install the rear bearing into the, the new rotor and then put the seal on. I'm going to lube the seal up with a little of that grease or if you have some assembly lube that's not a bad way to go. And I'm going to take a, a large socket that's about the size of that seal, tap it in with a hammer, working my way around, checking it a few times until it's all the way in. Drink a little High Life and we're ready to install everything back on the truck. Cleaned up the shaft and inspected it, and it all looked good. So we're ready, ready to put the rotor back on, the new rotor on, slide it on. And then we're gonna put the outer bearing back in. And then the thrust washer. The thrust washer has a little tab; it'll only go on one way. That keeps it from spinning. And then the uh, castle nut goes on. I'm going to tighten it up, but not real tight, like four or five foot-pounds, not a lot. But I, I tighten it, loosen it, tighten it as I'm rotating it and that, to make sure I get those bearings kind of seated so you're not just um, leaving it loose. I'll put the cotter key back in and bend it over so it won't fall out. And that's what really holds that nut on. It's not torque that yields the threads that hold that on. I'll put the dust cap back on, tap it in with a hammer all the way around until it's flush. We'll just clean up the rotor, make sure we didn't get any grease on it. Then we'll reinstall the caliper. You might have to tap on it with a hammer to get it lined up. Put both the pins back in. Those pins are cleaned up with a wire brush, lubricated with some brake lube, with the new O-ring on the outer end. And then tighten them back up with that 3 8 Allen. And then torque them. They torque to about 45 foot-pounds. You are done. Put the wheel on. You're good to go. Make sure you pump the brakes a couple times before you uh, drive it and test them out at about you know less than five mile an hour before you get rolling down the road but that should do it break on